before we dive into any of the more fun stuff that we're going to be building, let's go ahead and test the login functionality. We've already got the register functionality working. And then in the next couple of episodes, we'll look at how once again, we can refactor our tests just to make them that little bit simpler. Okay, so let's go and start with a test for the login page. So let's go ahead and make a test in here. And of course, we're going to call this login test. And sure enough, we're going to pass the pest flag down to that. So let's open login test. And this is going to test two things. The first thing is that when we hit the login page, if we are already logged in, it's going to redirect us somewhere else. And the second kind of set of tests are just going to be logging the user in, make sure that they are logged in. So let's start with the first one. It redirects and let's say an authenticated user. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this and just sort of start from scratch. And we already know that we can use higher order tests here. So like we did over on our register test, we could do something like this and then assert that we redirected somewhere. What we're actually gonna be doing in the next couple of parts is building some helpers just to make this even easier. So let's go ahead and say get slash login. And we need to be acting as a user here. So actually we can't quite use a higher order test. So let's just go ahead and do this as, in a standard way and then we'll look at how we can shorten this down with a custom assertion. So we're gonna go ahead and say user and we'll go ahead and create a user out in here. And of course, we're gonna need our refresh database trait. So let's pull this in and let's go down here and pull the user model in as well. There we go. And let's put our get helper in here and let's go ahead and get that login page. So it's just forward slash auth forward slash login. And we basically wanna assert that we're redirected somewhere else. So we could actually assert that the status, just to keep things simple, is a 302. So a temporary or a permanent redirect. So let's just try and run this. And of course we get a failure. Let's specifically run this test just to make it a little bit easier. So let's go into our feature tests and specifically run login test. Okay, so we get a 404. That's pretty obvious. We haven't built out the login page yet. So let's go ahead and create a controller for this. So make controller and login controller. And let's go over to that login controller. And let's go ahead and implement an invocable magic method. We won't do anything in here just for now because we just want to make sure that this test passes. And let's go and pull this in. We actually called this register index controller and we've just called this login controller, but let's leave it for now. We don't really care too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our test again. Here, and let's go up and we get a 200 because we're hitting that and we're not being redirected anywhere. That's where our middleware comes in. So let's go ahead and create a constructor out in here and we'll go and add some middleware to this. We could do that at the root level, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna say that we have to be a guest. So if we rerun that test, then let's see what happens. Oh, we still get a 200. So that is because in our test, we didn't act as a particular user. So let's go and say this acting as, of course, user because what we're testing is that if we are signed in it's going to redirect us across and let's rerun that great we get a pass okay so now that we've done that we could start to refactor this we could move this to the root level if we wanted to let's go ahead and just run the rest of our tests to actually hit that login post route that fortify provides us and once we're done with that we'll kind of come back to all of our tests and see if we can clear anything up so let's start with the really simple one and say it shows an error or flashes an error if the details are not provided. And again, you can go ahead and change that test name around if you wanted to. Let's post through to login. Remember, we don't need to be authenticated at this point, so we can just use a higher order test here. And we're just gonna assert that the session has the email and the password error. So let's say email and password. So let's rerun our tests here and we get green, great. Okay, so the final test, just to keep things simple, of course you could make this a little bit thorough if you wanted to, is just to check that it logs the user in. So it logs the user in. Let's go ahead and create a closure for this because it's gonna be a little bit more complex. And let's create our user. So we need a user in the database to be able to actually log the user in, of course. So let's go ahead and create a user out here. 
Now, of course, in a password, in a form to log in, we need the password. So we're gonna actually need to provide a password in here or use the default that exists within the Laravel factory, which is just password. What I like to do in my test is be a little bit more clear within the actual test and define the password out here myself so I know when I look at the test which password it's expecting rather than that value that's hidden away in the factory. So it's totally optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the bcrypt helper here to just say something like meow, I'm a catch or some silly password. And then we can go ahead and log in and we can see which password we're expecting here. So let's go up, we've pulled in the get helper, let's pull in the post helper as well here. And let's go down and let's post through to slash login. And we're gonna pass in the email address here, which we can just extract from the model. You could define that out if you wanted to as well. And we know that the password here needs to be meow, I'm a cat, and that is pretty much it. So we wanna assert that we're redirected over to the home page. Remember we changed that over earlier in our root service provider. Really important that we're redirected over to the right place. And then down here as a separate, we wanna go ahead and say this assert authenticated. And let's pull that up and let's go ahead and run our test. And there we go, it works. So we know now that when we post through with the credentials that are in the database, we get a redirect and we are authenticated. Now we could go ahead and tidy this up and technically create a higher order test. You might find that when you have more complex tests like this that have a kind of user creation, then posting through, then asserting something, that creating a higher order test doesn't really add that much value to each of your tests. So if you wanted to change this to a higher order test, let's just go through this one more time just so we can kind of practice. So let's get rid of this entire closure just here. Remember what we need to do is tap this. So we could do this up here. And for this, it'd probably be better not to use a shorthand and just use a regular closure. And we would want to go ahead and create the user within that closure. So let's pull that into there. And again, if you wanted to, you could just get rid of that password there if you know the default is password. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and post through to login. So let's pull that in here. So it's kind of the same. We're really doing the same thing here. And then down here at the end of that, we can then go ahead and assert that we are authenticated. So let's go ahead and pull that in and there we go. So that would be the higher order version of the test minus the password that we're manually passing in. So let's just go ahead and run our test. I think that's gonna fail because we've got the same name here. Let's just add an X on the end. And yeah, that actually fails. So let's have a look in here. The user is not authenticated. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're doing. Yeah, because the password's wrong. So let's change that to password. And there we go, we get green. So you could change that over to a higher order test if you want, but to be honest, for things like that, it kinda looks the same. So in this case, I tend to just pass in a closure. Now there are a ton of tests that we could write, but we're really focusing on pest syntax here. So what we're gonna do in the next episode is refactor this. We're gonna start with a really simple refactor using a custom function and then we're going to take it a little bit further in the episode after that and we're going to look at creating a custom assertion which is going to help to clear this up.